on my own, which I didn't mind, but that meant finding a new roommate, which can be a daunting and scary experience. I've had a few weird encounters, but I think this one takes the cake. I posted an ad on Craigslist looking for a bedroom in a shared house or apartment for $300 or less, and on my ad I mentioned, please no phone calls, only texts or email, because I find being on the phone with someone I haven't had a chance to size up a really uncomfortable situation. I'm just awkward, I guess. Anyway. I got a call from a dude who clearly didn't read the no calls part, which I mentioned because this type of phone call was exactly the reason I don't like to talk to strangers on the phone. At first he was just pleasant and normal, told me he had a room available and relevant information like that. We started to talk about when and where we'd meet, and he started going on tangents about random stuff. I'm in a combination of too interested in deep conversation and too awkward to end the call when it started to get weird. So this call went on for two hours, and we talked about the meaning of life and all kinds of weird stuff like that. Honestly, this should have been the red flag, and I shouldn't have met him, and of course I also should have grown a pair and told him I needed to leave, so he wants me to meet him at his place and show me the room. I've since learned that you should really insist on meeting in public first. I got to his neighborhood and it was run down on a level that made the ghetto I grew up in look nice. Saggy front porches, hot cracked concrete, sad people with old beat up Lincolns. You get the picture. His house blended right in. The yard was seriously overgrown and the front door didn't work. I went around the back and just looking at the guy standing in the doorway and seeing the kitchen behind him was enough to make me realize I really just wanted to leave. No way in hell. The guy in the doorway was a man with a sort of clown style afro. He was leaning on a cane on his right side. His eyes looked crazy and the house smelled musty from 10 feet away. Again, I'm a coward. So instead of trusting my gut, I go inside and I'm polite thinking, it's okay, it'll be over in 20 minutes and I can get out. I don't know what made me think this man who had a two hour conversation with me on the phone about life and philosophy would let me get away that easily. He took me up a flight of creaky steps into a small bedroom with no door and a mattress on the floor. I thought no way in hell would I live with a 40 something years old man and no door on my bedroom, but it wasn't a moot point because my mind was made up before I even saw the room. I wouldn't have lived there for free, let alone for $200 a month. Things got weird. He tried to hold me hostage with conversation again. I think he was lonely. He talked about how some of his family were millionaires. He might have been delusional. The whole story seemed made up. Then he told me about an 18-year-old girl that has also checked out the room and tried to fuck him. And told me about how his mom hated white people. He was black, I was white. And it sounded like he sympathized with her. Obviously, that was super uncomfortable. Eventually, I was able to find a break in conversation and plucked up the courage to make up an excuse to leave. I was never so happy to leave a place in my life. I don't know if he was necessarily a rapist or anything, but he really gave me the creeps. When I was 19, I was looking for a room to rent in the city I was moving to for college. It was about an hour away from my family. I wasn't having much luck and my mom started helping me look for a place. She found an ad on Craigslist for a room for $300 in a house, everything included. The homeowner was a man, and he rented the additional rooms upstairs to other women while he lived in the finished basement. The ad stated he rarely ever saw the other roommates because he had a kitchen and his own entrance downstairs, and that he preferred women because he had issues with male roommates in the past partying and causing damage. We decided to take a look since it was the cheapest that we could find in the area. My mom and I went to the house to view it. Decent house, decent neighborhood. He opened the door and was very welcoming. He was middle-aged and the kitchen and living room were furnished nicely and clean. My mom loves to talk and get to know people so they were engaged in conversation while I stood there quietly and observed the place. He then said he would show me my room. We head towards the staircase to go up, as I thought. Since he said on the phone my room was upstairs with the other roommates, but he opens another door and we follow. He takes us down to the basement and opens a door to a very small room, no closet and no windows. He proceeds to say this is my room and I will be sharing the bathroom in the hallway with him, and his bedroom did not have a door on it. I was definitely thinking absolutely not, this is weird, but they were so deep in conversation that I couldn't interject. He then leads us to the upstairs and shows us the other rooms which the doors were open and says they are currently rented. He then starts telling us elaborate stories about the other women 
not very nice stories describing drinking problems. My mom was listening intently, but I took the time to investigate further. I looked in all three rooms and the bathrooms. There was furniture, but not a single item in there that looked like it belonged to a woman, no clothes or anything, only men's clothes in one of the closets. He had no problem with me creeping around his tenants' rooms without their permission. I then heard him tell my mom that he has some of his stuff in their closets, but they don't mind. I was feeling really uncomfortable and started moving them back downstairs as they talked. My mom had mentioned when we arrived that her and my dad were going on vacation the next week, but I couldn't go because I had to work. He brought it up again, and that I should come by the next week and have dinner with him and the roomies to see if we would all get along. I said sure, and we left. As soon as we got in the car, I told my mom I would definitely not be living there. She was dumbfounded. I had to explain to her not only did he lie about the room I would be in, that I was not supposed to be in the basement with him as well as share a bathroom with him and he didn't even have a damn door, but also did she not notice how no one else even lived there? She still didn't get it and thought I was just being paranoid and thought he was nice and it was a cheap deal. I had to explain it to my stepdad and get him to tell her by no means would I be living there. I tried to report the post, but by the time we got home that day, he removed it. I think he planned on murdering me at dinner, or abducting me and holding me hostage in that basement room that had no way to escape. When I was 21 years old, I broke up with my first ever serious girlfriend, with whom I had been together for eight months. Needless to say, I was devastated. I fell into a deep depression. I began abusing painkillers and Xanax really heavily, and I began looking for any chick I could find to rebound with. I ended up looking on the personal section on Craigslist and found an ad for a girl named Stephanie. I began talking to her and I arranged for her to come pick me up one night. We had intercourse that night and decided to make it a regular thing. She was an older lady, about 35, and a bigger girl but she had her own apartment and enough money to keep me loaded on as much drugs and alcohol as I wanted. To be honest, I kind of used this lady and used her as my sugar mama for lack of a better word. After a while, she grew really attached to me and started to want a more serious relationship. Eventually, she started dropping hints about wanting to get married. She said she wanted to do this to help me out so she could get me on her insurance so I can get help for my drug and alcohol problem, which I refused to consider. One day, we got into a big argument and she told the police that I had been abusing her and got a temporary restraining order on me. A week after she did this, she called me crying her eyes out saying, please forgive me, I love you, and all this other stuff and said she wanted to come pick me up, buy me some dope and alcohol and get me something to eat. Being the addict I am, I of course accepted. From the moment she picked me up, I noticed that she was acting kind of odd. She was usually really talkative and was always on my ass wanting to talk to me about this and that, but on this day, she was oddly quiet. When we got back to her apartment, after I walked in, she immediately pushed me on the couch and pulled my pants down and began giving me head. I had been getting bad vibes off of her the whole night so after this happened, I immediately asked her for a ride back home which she quickly agreed to do. About 10 minutes after I was home I got a call on the phone. I picked up the phone and to my surprise a lady on the other end said, this is the St. Louis County Police Department, we're going to need you to come outside to talk to you. I ran downstairs, hid my weed and my pills, and then walked outside to figure out what the hell was going on. When I walked outside there were about 7 different cops on my porch and they were all pointing tasers and guns at me. One of them hit me in the back of my leg with a nightstick and put me on the ground, and I was handcuffed. The cops then talked to my mom and got permission to go inside of the house where they took a drug dog and began doing a thorough search of my room and my basement area. None of the cops on the scene would tell me what was going on. Whenever I would ask a question about why they were there, they told me I would have to talk to the detective at the station. When I got to the police station, I had a bombshell dropped on me. Apparently this lady had accused me of kidnapping and raping her. She told the police that she had come by my house to return some of my stuff because we had just broken up, and that I had come out, held a knife to her throat, and forced my way into her vehicle, taking her back to her apartment and raping her repeatedly. Thankfully I had remembered that we made a couple of stops on the way to her apartment. She had gone inside of a gas station to get a couple packs of cigarettes with me so there was no way that I could have kidnapped her. The police still swabbed my dick for DNA and they also took my clothes for evidence, and I was forced to spend the night in the St. Louis County Jail wearing nothing but hospital scrubs. I was released the next morning but my ordeal was far from over. This lady began constantly stalking me. She would call me every night at odd times from blocked numbers and either begin crying into the phone or just beg to talk to me. I also began seeing her vehicle quite a lot in the neighborhood, even though she lives nowhere close to me. 
I called the police about this a couple of times, but they didn't really seem to care. They told me I would have to go get a restraining order on her in order to make it stop. I wanted nothing to do with the court system though because I have a criminal record, and I just decided to ignore her and hope that the problem would go away. After a couple of months she finally did stop bothering me. However to this day, sometimes I get calls at 2 or 3 in the morning from blocked numbers, and every new girlfriend I get she messages them on Facebook and tells them how I raped her.